nothing else matters My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy There's nothing like the sound of Carolina hoofies We're here in Rayford, North Carolina at the Carolina Horse Park today for the 64th annual running of the Stony Brook Steeplechase. This is our first visit to a steeplechase race today, so I hope you guys are as excited as I am. With me now is Amy Quick from Hamlet, North Carolina. Amy, I understand you won the hat contest today in Best of Show. I did. I certainly did. Tell us a little bit about your hat. Well, I kind of got inspired. Uh, I'd seen a t-shirt that I thought was kind of funny. It kind of brought the fun times, you know, tailgating, so to speak, you know, drinking at Stony Brook, and right. so it said, you know, about the hats, and also, I said, well, I'm going to kind of get the fun drinking theme in for kind of something different, so All right. apparently it worked out okay. <laughs> cool. Can you turn around and let us see the whole thing? Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations, right, and thank, thank you, you for stopping by. All right, thank you. Yeah, right. With me now is Richard Boucher, and Richard was in the second race, and you came in second? Second, yes. Okay, and tell me a little bit about steeplechase racing. Um, we um, travel up and down the East Coast. Uh, it's mainly on a Saturday. It's a, a fun day out for the family and the, the people to come watch. Uh, it's a different type of horse. It is a thoroughbred. It mm -hmm. usually comes from the flat racing circuit that uh, may be either a little too slow for flat racing or just wants to change a career. Right. And uh, the steeplechasing trainers, they get them and uh, teach them how to jump. So when you're picking a horse to race, what do you like in him? Um, athleticism, um, a nice shoulder. Um, sometimes you can look at their flat form, where they've been racing, either on the turf or on the dirt. Usually the turf horses from the flat tracks run better, but there are a lot of horses um, you know, that come from the dirt tracks that will excel steeplechasing. I noticed that most of the horses that are in the races today are four-year-olds, is that right? Um, there is, there is, seems to be a, an influx of younger horses coming, but also there's an influx of uh, younger trainers and younger owners coming in. Um, so the people are looking for a horse that is not too run out on the flat. You right. know, if they've run a lot of races and they're sort of tired and six and seven years old, then it's hard to really get them steeplechasing. And do you run all pr predominantly geldings and mares and not stallions in this? Um, there's a couple of uh, colts that run, but um, it can get a little tough on them reaching over a fence with, um, you know, their Intact, manhood. Right. <laughs> so um, the geldings are more more favorable. Um, some of the fillies, I actually, the one I rode in the second race was a mare. Um, she was only having her second start. We found her in Florida, and um, she had some good uh, old turf breeding in her pedigree, so we thought we'd give her a try. And she seems like she's improving. She finished second today, and uh, she'll hopefully uh, grow on that and hopefully win before the end of the spring season. Now, why did you decide to go into steeplechase racing? Uh, well, I always uh, liked racing as a kid, and um, from England, I rode a little bit on the flat when I was younger, and then of course the weight gets to you and mm -hmm. stuff like that, so uh, steeple chasing. And um, then we came here, and um, it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun sport to do, and it's not so demanding as the flat racing. Flat racing is like every day, and you're working hard. Um, steeple chasing is more of a weekend sport, mm -hmm. and uh, you have time to do other things as well. Do you raise any of the horses that you race? Um, we have not. We've uh, thought about breeding some, but it's a, it's a long process, the breeding side. It's, you know, four years right. to see if you've got any, uh, any uh, ability. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's nearly easier to go around the, the racetracks at Laurel or Delaware, Philadelphia mm -hmm. Park. And you, you can find a nice horse for, 
you know, five thousand to ten thousand dollars that can come out here and compete and uh, have a bit of fun with. Right. Oh, they're beautiful animals, and you did such thank a you. great job. We were cheering you on. No, thank, thank you, you for you. taking time with me. Thank you. All nice right. talking to you. Very good. Behind me, you see all of the crowd getting ready for the steeplechase, so you stay tuned and we'll be right back. If you're interested in a career working with horses, then Martin Community College is the place for you. MCC's Equine Technology Program is the only one offered among North Carolina's 58 community colleges. The program is management-oriented with classes in breeding, nutrition, training, riding, equine health, and more. Graduates can leave MCC prepared to work in recreational and racing barns, breed to discipline-oriented farms, or assistant farm management. For more information, contact Martin Community College today. Hi, I'm Rick Feniston. I trained my horse Jake to trust me and be brave in order to face the obstacle challenges and win in extreme cowboy races. It takes dedication, hard work, and innovation to train a champion. As an attorney representing injured persons, I use the same skills to win compensation for people injured in accidents or on-the-job injuries. If you've been injured in an accident, or on the job and need advice, call me. I want to hear from you. With me now is Ross Garrity, and Ross is based in Maryland, originally from Ireland, and you've been racing today. Tell me how those first two races went. Yes, the first race I finished third. It was a nice run for the horse. It was his third start over hurdles. Um, he'll improve a lot for today, and we're looking forward to maybe running him in Atlanta in two weeks' time. And in the second race, was there the same horse? Same horse? No, no, different different horse, different trainer. Um, he was a horse I'd never ridden before. Um, he ran an Aiken two weeks ago and he tipped over the last. He was a little unlucky. He ran a nice race. He made a mistake at the fort from home and it just probably cost him. It took him took some of the momentum out of him and took right. it all. He finished fifth in the end. He ran pretty nicely. And, you know, hopefully he can step up okay. some other day. Do you race more today? I ride in the fourth race and um, I ride a filly called Bow by Gold for the trainer that won the first race. Um, she won an Aiken two weeks ago. She's, she's a gutsy little girl. Uh, she takes on five, five geldings, which are male horses. Right. Um, but I think she has the, she's, she, she can win it. She's probably the, the favourite and we're just hoping okay. we can pull it off. Do you prefer riding fillies over geldings or is it um, just based on the horse? <laughs> It doesn't really make a difference. I, I've had a lot of success on fillies in this country. Um, you, you have to ride them a little bit differently, mm -hmm. a little bit more tenderly. Now, that filly, she goes from the front end. But you have to just keep her happy the whole time and, and have her enjoying it, and it works. Um, okay. But by and large, it, there's no real difference to them. And what made you decide to be a steeplechase jockey? Oh, it's a family business, sort of. <laughs> it comes down through generations. Um, my two brothers both done it, my three sisters have all done it. It's busy, busy family and they race in England and Ireland and all over the place. So we're all over the world. That's awesome. Well, it was really fun watching it today and good luck in the fourth race. Super. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. With me now is Arch Kingsley from Camden, South Carolina. And Arch is a trainer. So tell me a little bit about training a steeplechase horse. Well, they're older, more mature horses in terms of the race horses that you'll find. Uh, on the track they're ages three and four up and it takes years to, to develop a top steeplechase horse it, it really is the development of the stamina in the thoroughbred athlete as well as the speed that it takes to, to be a successful racehorse uh, additionally toughness and soundness in order to, to go the distance and to jump the jumps and to come out of it all on Sunday morning still in one piece. Right. And is there anything special that you look for when you're looking for prospects? You like to see a horse that is well balanced in their confirmation, that they're fairly correct, um, not overly heavy, muscle bound, um, uh, or in their bone structure, particularly so in their front end. You don't want to see a horse that's too heavy or too shouldery. Um, you like to see some length and some scope to the horse. Mm -hmm. you know, generally those kind of things. Do you look for um, horses that have had success on the track? or? Ideally, or, yeah, yeah. Those are definitely what you want. You'd like to find horses that have run, shown some kind of form going long on the grass. Mm -hmm. But they can come from dirt sprints too, honestly. I, the, the 
Well Old timers would say that you can teach a horse how to go far, but you can't teach them how to run fast. Right. So it's easier to stretch them out than it is to give them any speed if they if God didn't give them any. So that's a wise saying for yeah, sure. Yeah. And so you used to be a, a steeplechase jockey too? I did. Yeah, I was a jockey for six or seven years professionally, and I had a lot of success or a lot of good days, I should say, here at Stony Brook. I love this meet. I, I live in Camden, as you said, mm -hmm. and. It means that uh, I'm only two hours from home and I'll be sleeping in my bed tonight and right. I get to come up and it seems like it's always beautiful weather, the footing's always good, there's an enthusiastic crowd. I, I love I love coming up here. Now the, stone, the steeplechase is a circuit that you guys race, correct? Correct. And where it all does it take place? It's up and down the east coast. Uh, in the spring it starts in the south, works its way up to the mid-Atlantic later in the spring. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, in the summertime runs at some of the major racetracks more sparingly so than we do in the spring and in the fall and then it resumes in the fall at the hunt meets right again in the in the mid-atlantic um, and then works down down south in the in the late fall where it all resumes uh, in I'm sorry where it concludes in Camden in November okay very good well thank you for spending some time with me you're welcome good luck I hope you've enjoyed watching the Stony Brook steeplechase today as much as I have. I've sure learned a lot and I can hardly wait for the next one. Thanks for watching Carolina Hoofbeats. My name is Scott Brookins and I am the owner of Brookins Construction and MD Barnmaster of the Carolinas. At MD Barnmaster we have the best warranty in the business. We have a variety of designs to choose from. Our barns are easily customizable to meet and fit uh, meet your needs. Uh, we have financing available to those who qualify. Our barns are fire resistant and they hold their value with little maintenance. Let us build your dream barn for you today. Are you ready for that awesome outdoor experience? An outdoor living space that can be enjoyed by all? Let the expertise of award-winning Bell Guard authorized contractor Harper Landscaping, serving Eastern and Central North Carolina, design and install that perfect space. A place to let the family enjoy and relax, a divine intervention to outdoor living. Whether it be a cookout with friends and family or an after school hangout, Harper Landscaping can help you create that perfect space for many moments to cherish. Earlier this year, we asked all of our readers and viewers to give us their opinions on different categories. We start this series with the top five veterinarians in our state. We'll be featuring those winning veterinarians throughout season three at different times and in no particular order. This week's pick, Lisa Kivett. We're here today in Southern Pines with Lisa Kivett, and as you guys know, she was voted one of the top vets in our state, and Lisa owns Foundation Equine. So tell us a little bit about you. Sure. Uh, I graduated veterinary school from North Carolina State University. Uh, following that, I went to Louisiana State University for an internship and I did a residency in internal medicine at Auburn University. Uh, once I got board certified in internal medicine, I returned to Southern Pines, my home state of North Carolina, uh, practiced for a few years, and opened Foundation Equine two years ago. And Foundation Equine's a mobile vet practice? Foundation Equine has been a mobile veterinary practice for the last two years, uh, and we've just secured this location for a little while. Uh, we now have an office and we have facilities to hospitalize a few horses and we're very much uh, trying to grow the practice into something that's going to be uh, really impressive in the future. All right. Well, you, you had an enormous amount of votes and a lot of that had to do with a, a little celebrity call, Hope. Uh, yes, so Hope. Tell us a little bit about Hope. Sure. Uh, Hope was a very unfortunate starvation case. Uh, she was, when we found her, she was located at a farm in Larnburg, North Carolina. Uh, that farm called itself a rescue, but unfortunately the owner of the farm was not well and the horses did not receive adequate care. So when Hope uh, was actually surrendered to animal control, she was placed in a foster home where we very carefully tried to rehabilitate her. Uh, she was probably as thin as I've ever seen a horse who was still standing. We had to be very careful with her diet and in the process of trying to refeed her very carefully, uh, things did not go as we expected, and she most likely suffered from some refeeding syndrome. She then was down and unable to get up. Uh, she did not want to give up, and neither did uh, the people involved, including uh, Rachel Medley, who runs Old Glory Legacy Foundation and Sandhills Horse Rescue. And 
Uh, with her help, we were able to move Hope to that location. Uh, we were very lucky to have Justin and Tori McLeod, mm -hmm. who run the equine ambulance and other services here. They brought the sling. We were able to sling her, keep her up uh, so that the bed sores didn't get too bad. They actually were really bad. And just keep her eating. And the entire time, all we said was that all Hope has to do is not die. Right. And she didn't die. So she is fat and happy and healthy. And it's been a very, very long six months with a lot of you know, wound care and rehabilitation, but she is going to be absolutely fine now. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's a mistake a lot of folks make when they, they find a horse that's been starved is they try to feed them a bunch of food and that yes. makes it even worse. Absolutely. It? it changes the way that they're, uh, when they haven't eaten for a long period of time and then you feed them certain feeds, their insulin levels will spike and the insulin levels then throw off their electrolytes. Mm -hmm. That will make their heartbeat irregular, make them unable to breathe, and they will actually die from the insulin released from the feed. So you have to go very, very careful with the right kind of food. Right, so people really should leave that up to the pros that know what they're doing. They should, or, or if they're going to rehabilitate a horse that has not had any food in a long period of time, at least seek out people who can provide them with the resources to do it properly. Right, that sounds good, good advice. So tell me what else is on the, the agenda for you for the future? Uh, so <laughs> there are a lot of plans for the future, um, namely for Foundation Equine growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to hire a second vet uh, sometime before next year. We're pretty busy and I'd like to add a person who will bring some services that I don't currently offer. Um, there are other things in the future including working more with Sand Hills Horse Rescue mm -hmm. uh, and trying to grow that in a way that we can uh, rescue some more horses. Currently we can take about four at the time. Uh, it'd be really nice to get enough community support and donations that we could expand that a little bit. Right. And so you ride yourself? What? I do. I grew up riding hunter jumpers uh, in eastern North Carolina. Uh, I then sort of went to dressage for a little while and then uh, since I moved to Southern Pines I've been doing mainly eventing. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone does here. Right. Uh, and then in the last six to nine months, I've been too busy to ride. So the horses are on a, a little bit of a hiatus. And when uh, we get a second bed and I can take a little bit more time, I'll climb back on and go back to the shows. All right. Uh, Hope is a now three-year-old uh, pony of unknown breeding. Hope was uh, surrendered to animal control from a farm in Laurenburg that called themselves a rescue. Um, but unfortunately had stopped adequately caring for the animals. Uh, the time she was surrendered, Hope was a body condition score of one out of nine, which is severely emaciated. Yeah. She was the skinniest horse that I've ever seen that survived. I've seen them thinner, but they didn't make it. Uh, she spent about a week or two in a foster home where we were very careful to try to refeed her without causing any uh, damage to her system and shocking her system with food. Uh, unfortunately, despite our best efforts, she was so thin and so weak that she ended up collapsing anyway. Uh, once she was down, she was not able to get up. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have local resources, including Rachel Medley with Old Glory Legacy Foundation, who had uh, a facility that would be appropriate to house her while she was down. Mm -hmm. uh, and Justin and Tori McLeod, who run the Horse Ambulance and NC Smart, they're a specialized transport team for horses who are injured or incapacitated. So they were able to come and we were able to actually transport her safely while she was down and unable to get up. Uh, to Old Glory Legacy Foundation, where we then spent several days with her unable to get up. Uh, she eventually regained enough strength to stand a little bit. It took several people um, with special straps to assist her to get up and she mm -hmm. could stay up for a short period of time before she would go back down. As she regained strength, she was able to stay standing, but once she laid down to sleep, she was then unable to get up. So she was unwilling to lay down knowing that it could be a problem. Yeah. So we were able to again use Justin and Tori McLeod who brought over a sling for Hope. Mm -hmm. uh, it was too big for her. We ultimately ended up doing a fundraising campaign and securing enough funds to get a custom sling that was more appropriate. And then every couple of days we would put her in the sling and she would take a nap. And as soon as we put her in that sling and she felt herself supported, she would immediately begin to go into REM sleep. Her head would fall over, she would dream, her ears and would flick and her nose would go and she would whinny. And uh, it really rejuvenated her to be able to sleep so she could yeah. spend her energy you know, just getting stronger. So 
She also, she got a lot of sores from being down on her head, on her withers, on her hips. They're basically pressure sores. Um, and they did become infected. So she had months of antibiotics and intensive wound treatment. Uh, we did attempt skin grafts for the withers. Uh, a couple of them actually did take, but not enough to really get us where we needed to be. So we ended up doing a bandage for a long time. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're basically six months out now. The wounds don't really require any care. They're not fully healed over with new skin, um, but they're healed over enough that they don't bother her. And, and all we have to do is just clean them every now and then. Uh, and she's obviously now 100% normal horse. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So will she be up for adoption or will she stay here? So we actually have not determined the future for Hope. Uh, we are just getting to know Healthy Hope. Mm -hmm. We've really just met Healthy Hope in the last month. <laughs> right. So we need to learn a little bit more about her um, to know where she fits in this world. Mm -hmm. um, she's a lot of things that we didn't expect. Um, she's got more feistiness than we thought. Mm -hmm. She's maybe smarter than we thought. Um, she seems to really bond with one person or, or people who are close to her maybe more than we thought. So we just want to make sure we get to know her and what she wants out of life before we make decisions for her as to whether she's going to be a riding horse up for adoption. You know, we just don't know and, and fortunately we can take our time in making that decision. That's really wonderful. Well, you've done an outstanding job because I, you. I you, you guys will see from the pictures, uh, you know, of Hope in the beginning that she, I really didn't think she'd make it. She's, it was, it was touch and go. We were really worried. Yeah, it's good to see Healthy <laughs> Hope. That's for sure. I'm so happy. There's nothing like the sound of Carolina This is Paul Dunn from Mule City Feeds. We've been delivering horse feed to Eastern North Carolina since 1981. And not only have we been delivering it, we've been leading the industry so far as compliance with state North Carolina and giving the best quality product possible. We test everything that comes in from the local farmers. We do quality assurance and we deliver the product. Give us a chance. Your neighbor's giving us a chance. We'd like to have your business here at Mule City Feeds. Also, when you deal with the big feed companies, you might have to wait four or five days just to get the feed. Give us a call and you'll be shocked we'll deliver an hour. North Carolina Horse Council welcomes you to the fourth annual Cowboy Up event held September the 11th through the 13th in Lumberton, North Carolina at the Southeastern Agricultural Events Center. The excitement begins on Friday night with a rib cook-off. This is a new event that we've added this year, and we're given area cooks bragging rights if they're the winner. And you as the participants get to come and get a plate and vote for your favorite cook. While you're eating those ribs, you can be enjoying the jackpot cutting that'll be going on. A jackpot cutting showcases the teamwork of a man and his horse as they maneuver cattle all around the ring and hold them and make them go where they want them to go, just as they do out west on the big cattle ranches of today. Then come back early Saturday morning. At 8 o'clock, we start with ranch sorting. Ranch sorting is a team of two horses and two riders who have 10 cattle in a ring, and the object is to sort them in numerical order and move them from one pen to the other, one cow at a time. The fastest time wins. That will be held in the main arena inside the event center. On the outside, we'll be hosting the North Carolina Horse Council's Extreme Trail Challenge. That's a fun event to watch, and you get to see horses and riders maneuver through an obstacle course and see who can do it the best and who can do it the fastest. While that's going on, our cooks will be firing up those grills for a pig cook-off. You'll be able to buy a plate of pork and vote on your favorite cook for the whole hog. So that's a new event this year, and everybody's excited about those bragging rights. After the team sorting, and the trail challenge, we will have an old-timey auction consisting of all kinds of items that you're just not going to be able to resist. About 6 o'clock, we will start with our entertainment segment of our celebration. And this year, we're going to be able to see working cow dogs, freestyle dressage, trick riders, freestyle reining, freestyle western dressage, a coon mule jump, mules doing western pleasure, a drill team demo, and more. Sunday morning, 
just as exciting. We start out with Cowboy Church, and after that, everybody's getting up for the barrel race. It'll be so exciting to see who's got the fastest horse in our area. So be sure and join us for this exciting event, September the 11th through the 13th. For more information, go to the NC Horse Council website at www.nchorsecouncil.com. This event is sponsored by the North Carolina Horse Council, the Lumberton Visitors Bureau, the Border Belt Horsemen's Association, Carolina Hoofbeats, Carolina Hoofbeats TV, Modern Horseman, Modern Horseman TV, and Southeast Equine Magazine. Hi, my name's Paul Dunn. I'm from uh, Mule City Feeds here in Benson. I'm a member of the Benson Area Chamber of Commerce, and these are my mules. We want to invite you to come to Benson Mule Days in September, be the fourth weekend. And uh, starting on Thursday, we're going to have a concert. It's free. Please come see that. On Friday, we'll have the mule events. It's just like a horse show. You come, you bring your mules, you come sit in the stand, see what happens. The most fun thing that happens all day long is the mule race. We actually have uh, people that are proud enough uh, to, to go after riding mules, and after that we have a pool. Also on Friday we have uh, rodeo and street dance, and uh, there are all kinds of things going on at the Grove downtown. It's just like being at the State Fair. On Saturday, it's really a great uh, event where we have a parade like none other in the state of North Carolina. It's just like any parade for about an hour and a half. Uh, you get to see all the beauty queens and bands, and then after that, there's about 2,000 horse and rider and wagons. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the biggest events in North Carolina. Saturday afternoon, we have a bluegrass show, and uh, Saturday evening, we have more rodeos and street dances, and there's plenty of uh, carnival rides for the kids. On Sunday, we finish up with a rodeo and more carnival rides. Uh, look forward to seeing you. Come on down to Mule Day this September. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net and also by Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in North Carolina. Catch up on the latest issue at carolinahoofbeats.com. And also by Southeast Equine Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in the Southern United States. Sitting high in the saddle, nothing else matters. My feet.